Hey gangsters, thanks for joining me today. It's Monday, March 21st, Spring Equinox 2022, and I am, uh, I'm going to give you a demo of how I test aquarium water. Now this is what I call a quick test, and let me gather the tools real quick to show you what I use. First off, these are my favorite quick dip strips, Aquarium Co-op multi-test strips. They also have a separate one for ammonia so that you don't have to use an ammonia test strip. That just happens to be one that I have, so I'm using it. Let's see. Aquarium Co-op strips, 200 test strips for like $17.99. I buy about three bottles of this a year. I buy some of these about every third year. It's a, a combo of Total Dissolve Solid or TDS multimeter test or it is a multimeter but test pen and a pH meter the way these work super easy stick it in it's going to read 50 something okay 52 cool exactly like it did last time that's the TDS test total dissolved solids confusing term because that does not tell us a parts per million reading on what is really totally dissolved in the water. It only shows us a certain group of ions or ionic molecules that are in there, but it's still a very useful reading, so we write that down. I use it because it helps me keep track of salinity, among other things. This one is a bear. Cheap tool, hard to use. Why do I say that? It's just, it's not hard, it's just a pain because it takes longer. So generally I will dip a, a, a test strip, set it down, then start using this because it takes forever. Now these particular pins are not backlit, it takes a while for the reading to come out. So I dunk it, give it a shake. You want to stick it in a spot that isn't like covered in duckweed, but whatever. That's what I did. That's fine. I think I know where this is going to go. I think this pH is going to land somewhere in the 6.7 range. Now, previously I did a, t a water test on this tank, and I wrote, the, I wrote the result down wrong. Third column is pH. I wrote 7.70. It should have been 6.70, and that was just ridiculous, so I'm reshooting the video. Blah! Haha! <laughs> so let's talk about this stuff. This is my aquarium water log, a.k.a. my water parameters journal. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, blah, 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 down through right now, tank N are different aquariums. Up at the top, I date it. I keep track of temperature, total dissolved solids, pH, general hardness, or GH, carbonate hardness, KH, nitrate, nitrite, ammonia, and chlorines. So let's look back up here and see what this guy's doing. 6.71. Hmm. Right at where I thought it was going to be. Click it off. Cool. So generally, we would just come right down here, transfer that number. Because I know I messed this up, we're going to scratch that and write 6.71 there. Previously, I went through here. Now this thing, it's been sitting too long, so it no longer reads accurately. It's probably been 15 minutes since I dipped it. But they give you a nice little thing you can code off of, or you can look at the back of the bottle, just like most test strips, and from that, there's one thing that I want to tell you about in just a moment. You go through, color match, blah, blah, blah. I've already written these down. But look here at this pH line. What they're really doing is extrapolating some data in a way that I appreciate, but it's not really a pH line. Why? Because a P, a, you can't really get pH from a test strip. Um, that's something that it's too complicated for me to briefly spit out. But what they're doing is getting a reading of alkalinity, and that is being interpreted as pH. And I don't really agree with that. Mainly because it's wrong in my aquariums. It's probably It probably works just fine for uh, the aquarium co-op guys up in Seattle, but... It uh, doesn't happen to work well for my tanks here in Little Rock. Uh, we have super soft water, and eh, that's that's only one of the reasons why it doesn't work well for me. But the other is, uh, 
Let's see, let's look over here. The other test is going to be the ammonia test. Now, this tank, let's look at it. Lots of fish. It's a 20 tall. I don't know how many fish are in there, but let's get a look at my last count. 60. 60 fish for 20 gallons. That's a lot of stock, right? Especially when you consider it's only got a cheapo sponge filter in the back. Can you see that? Yeah. So, sponge filter hangs out back there, bubbling up. And I just think that's that's a bunch of fishies for a freshwater planted aquarium, even if it is heavily planted. Many of these plants uh, are fast growing. They're only, let's see, the moss and the anubias. Are those the only slow growers in there? I think so, yeah. So lots of fast growing plants, but it's still a high fish load. So let's look over at the ammonia because that is the critical thing on this tank. And while I don't think it's going to be readable here, it might be. Let's see. Let's try to get a, a look at that. Yeah, we can read ammonia in this tank. So that's why we do water tests, because we don't know. This one's been sitting for maybe 20 minutes, but I don't think it's going to be changing. So it looks like we're roughly at maybe an eighth of a PPM, like... 0.125 parts per million of, of ammonia, and that's more than I want it to be, admittedly. So, for this tank, we're probably looking at a need to add either a couple of additional fast-growing plants and something else. All of this is Christmas moss, like on this side of the tank, and I've, I've been meaning for a while to pull out some of this, maybe even with scissors, and add some more fast-growing stem plants. Anacaris is one I really like using in these. Uh, Elideas, um, what else? I like fan warts, kabamba, I like bacopas, hornwort. Actually, I'm looking for some hornwort right now. I haven't had any in a while. So if you got some around central Arkansas, give me a shout. I'll come buy it from you. But let's go back to our test test logbook. I need to write down an ammonia reading over here. 0.125. That's significant because my other tanks, I never read ammonia. So that is, that's a significant thing here and I'm glad that we were making a video while it happened. So let's look at all the stuff. Again, temp is the first thing we look at. 76. Um, how did I find that? I've got a, a digital thing stuck to the side of the tank. Don't laugh. I put my thermometer on upside down, but whatever. It's 76 degrees. I clearly was not looking at it when I was look, sticking that sticker thing. 52 was our PP, or P, yeah, parts per million of total dissolved solid, TDS. Now, do I really believe it's 52? No, but for the category of total dissolved solids, that's a real reading, and we're going to write it down because it's something we can measure from. pH, about 6.71. Yep, we believe that. GH, or general hardness. These are not written in degrees of hardness. These are written in parts per million. So this is 5 ppm GH, or general hardness. This is 5 ppm of KH, or carbonate hardness. If you're used to reading in degrees, this is kind of like switching from metric to standard or something, but not a big deal. You can look at a chart and see exactly what how they read and the other stuff. But this guy here, eh, it's okay. We're going to mess with that. These up here, the nitrate column, tank G and F, these are the tanks that I thought were going to be the worst water quality of my tanks. You can see that 300, 350, I don't like those. Actually, 162, that's really high for total dissolved solids for a freshwater planted aquarium also. This stuff being zero, great, we like that. That's too high, that's too high because these are too high. This will drop down into the 7.0 or 6.8 range by simply removing about half of those. So if I do a 50% water change on tank G here, I can expect those numbers, 300, 300, and 50, they're roughly gonna be halved. Magic, right? Math. Like, how in the world did that happen? So we take out half the water, we took out half the numbers of the, the little things floating in the water. Cool. We'll do it. So that's how we know when to do water changes, by doing good water testing. So I'll go through here over the next few minutes, and 
actually it's probably going to take me two hours to test all these tanks but I will test tanks A through N write down what's going on I'm going to do all of my water testing before I do any water changes there are several reasons for that but trust me it's a better idea if you've got multiple tanks do all your water tests first you might learn something in that process that changes your mind about your big plan or even what tank you're going to take care of first but from that thank you for watching this is quick testing and how we do it here at the Arkansas Planet Aquarium Club and Tropical Farm so yeah we'll get back to some of that stuff fish keeping hanging out with the fishies and kitty cats and if you enjoy this sort of thing give me a like or subscribe share it if you know somebody who might benefit from a little bit of water coaching water parameter testing is one of the harder things of aquarium keeping that's why I show you how I do it. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys have a great day.